Hey, what's up, guys? Um, today I'm going to be... Uh, actually, I'm doing this because I know uh, a lot of people have asked me uh, about doing cloth meshes through Maya. And it's really easy, and once I show you, I know you'll have a lot of fun with it. Um, just to kind of give you a preview of something I'm kind of going to do for you, it'd be something like this. And it's just a... Uh, like a sheet falling down on a, on a piece of a uh, cylinder uh, which is a very very simplified version of maybe a tablecloth or something like that so uh, let's let's jump into it and um, let's see how we do alright now it doesn't matter what your grid space is it doesn't matter how big it is or anything like that um, now if you if you are doing something that you're transferring into UDK or something go ahead and and set your your grid uh, grid alignment up uh, and then uh, come back um, so what I'm gonna do first I'm just gonna grab a cylinder I'm just gonna make any any size it doesn't matter um, I'm gonna go up here to the attribute editor and just go ahead and even this thing out so I'm gonna make the radius uh, we'll do 96 and then the height I'll do 32. I'm going to zero it out so it's directly in the middle aside from this middle translate and what I'm going to do is divide my height in half that way the top of the mesh actually sits on top of the grid or the bottom of the mesh sits on top of the grid as you can see like that if you were to do a zero half your, half your mesh would go through the grid and we shouldn't get in those habits. So uh, 16, I just divided 32 in half. That way the bottom of the mesh sits on top of the grid. Um, so that's it with the cylinder. Uh, you can do a square, a triangle, a cone, it doesn't matter. Um, just for this demonstration, I'm going to show you uh, it doesn't matter. So now I'm going to go up here to uh, the polygons again. I'm going to select a plane and I'm just gonna make this thing as big as I want to. You guys can make it any size you want. It really doesn't matter. Just make sure and zero it out. This one you can you can do a complete zero on all the translates in the attribute editor. Um, I'm gonna make it um, I guess 256 is fine. Should be. I don't want it incredibly big. Well, we'll do 512. Now that is probably yeah, it's incredibly big, but whatever. All right, so we got our plane done. I did mine at 512 by 512. I'm just going to raise it up above this because what we want to do is actually have this sheet fall down on the cylinder and um, act like a tablecloth, so to speak. So uh, first things first, uh, if, if you do need to catch up or, or go back to the beginning, now's the time. Uh, so go ahead and pause the video or re rewind it, uh, go back through some steps, and uh, then come back when you have your cylinder your and your plane, and you're ready to jump into making it a cloth. Alright, so first, um, I'm actually going to go into the plane and go to the attribute editor again, and I'm going to make the subdivisions at 32. Now this is in the polyplane 1, unless you've renamed it. Uh, and subdivision width I did 32, subdivision height I did 32 and the reason for this is if you don't have any subdivisions your plane will not bend. Uh, all these all these squares are uh, actually your, your vertices actually is what is going to bend. So you want a lot of, of vertices that way it bends and it looks a lot more fluid than you know just having like two vertices and then it just kind of folds in half. Um, to make this even better, now if you have a good enough video card you could smooth it, which can't do that in vertex mode. Um, you could smooth it, which makes like this, and then triangulate it. Oh, well, I do not want to quad triangulate it. And then you would have a lot of things uh, bending and acting like cloth and that would, that would really look good. 
Um, but all I'm going to do is just triangulate it. So I'm going to go to Mesh and just triangulate. And if you're using UDK, you have to do this anyway. So you might as well get in that habit. Um, okay, so we've triangulated it. We've gave it some subdivisions. Now let's actually make it a cloth. So we're going to go up here to Polygon, drop down menu. We're going to go to End Dynamics. And first, we're going to go to End Mesh with the plane selected. We're going to go to End Mesh, Create End Cloth, and we're going to click on this little option box. And this would this would be good if you already had a nucleus um, made, because um, it asks you which which one you want to you want the cloth to react to. Right now, we don't have one, so you know, we're just going to hit Create Cloth. And now, if you hit play, actually, I'm going to change my play link to 1024, just so it plays through. Now you'll see the cloth goes down, but it doesn't collide with the cylinder. It doesn't do anything, it just falls. That's not what we want. So. Now that we have the cloth animated, where it actually plays and it's, it's going down, the gravity has an influence on it, now we need to fix the cylinder. And the way to do that is go ahead and click your cylinder, or square, or sphere, whatever you have, and uh, go up here to end mesh, create passive collider. And what this is going to do is actually have that mesh collide with your cloth. So we're going to click that, you don't have to click the option box. Now we're going to hit play. So now it actually falls, reacts to the cylinder. It's a really big sheet, but that's what we want. Looks really nice, really cool. Now you may have noticed that yours seems a bit stiff or not stiff enough um, and I, I'll, I'll go through a few of these options I won't go through them all but go ahead and click your plane and go up here to the attribute editor again now you'll see these three new tabs you have output cloth cloth shape and nucleus now nucleus is the environment of what interacts with your cloth. So, um, two things I'm going to talk about in the nucleus. One, you can change the wind direction, the air density, the gravity, all that kind of stuff. So it's it's very cool. The second one is, let's say you had two different cloths and you wanted them to act two different ways. The way to do that is to have an individual nucleus for each one. Um, so if you had Two of two of our demonstrations here with the cylinder and the plane. If you wanted them to act the same, you would put them in the same nucleus. Um, again, nucleus is is just a another name for the environment that is interacting with the cloth that you select to go into it. Um, so then, in the cloth shape, uh, and I, and I'll show you like what this. If you if you did uh, wind speed put it up to five and then the wind noise put it up to five you can you can see it's going sideways and it's not even going to reach it it's just going to start waving and there it goes like it's blowing in the wind like a sheet so that that's what the nucleus is again it's just the environment in which the the cloth is being manipulated. Uh, if you go to the cloth shape, here you can change all kinds of of different things: the stretch resistance, the bend resistance, the mass, the lift, the drag, dampening, all this, all this different stuff. And it, like, if you put the mass at 0.25, it'll seem a lot less heavy or less less thick, maybe. Um, 
which I think thickness is an actual it is thing thing ever goes Now you can see it acts a little bit thinner, not as thick, not as, uh, it, it bends a little smoother. But that that's how, that's what that is. So go around in, in the cloth shape and just play around with stuff. You also have presets up here that you can have, you know, honey, which is really crazy. It it acts like a, like a slime, it stretches really far. Like it is nuts. And it just goes and goes and goes. And it's actually very cool. But go around it and play around with some of these settings now. And um in the next video I'll talk about in constraints and how they work with in cloths and how you can attach two cloths or a cloth to a static mesh.